Hey everybody, Patton here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at PSP games on your classic system. In terms of release date, this is the newest system you can put on here that will run pretty well. For the most part, this core runs just as well as any other core. You're going to be using disc games, which means you don't want to compress them. The only difference with this core is that you have to change the frame skip on a couple games to get them to run a little bit smoother. And I'll show you guys how to do that shortly. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to hack your system. I will have a tutorial on how to do that in my description for you to follow along with. After you've hacked your system, go to the Modules tab in Hatchy CE and to the Hatchy Mod Store. Under the RetroArch tab, you want to download the newest version of RetroArch Neo. You're going to highlight it and hit the button right here that says Download Module. And that will put that module on your Hatchy program. Next, you're going to open up the RetroArch Cores tab. You're going to go to the PSP Core, which is PPSSPP Neo Core. Once again, hit the Download button. It'll put it on Hatchy. Along with the PSP Core, I recommend you download this 2048 RetroArch Game Core, and I'll show you why that comes into play later. Close the Mod Store. Go back into your Modules tab, then install extra modules. You're going to put a check mark next to RetroArch Neo 2048 and PPSSPP Neo. You're going to hit the OK button right here. You'll see a bar up here on your screen. It'll start to fill up, and when it's filled in all the way, it means these cores are installed to your system and they're ready to be used. Add the games to your Hatchy program. Go to the Add More Games button down here at the bottom. You're going to navigate to the folder where your games are kept. Highlight the game and click the Open button. Like I said before, these are disc-based games. So if you have the setting Compress Games when adding checked, it's going to turn that into a zip file, which we don't want. If that's the case, just click the box right here that says Compress, and it'll decompress it into just the regular disc file. Now these games can get pretty big, so I've included in my description a program called PSP ISO Compressor. How to use this? Once you open it up, go to Compress ISO to CSO. CSO stands for Compressed ISO. You're going to hit the button with the three dots right here to go to the file you want to compress. We're going to do Persona 2 Innocent Sin. Hit the open button. You'll get a message here that's just clarifying the file that you want to compress. Hit OK. And then you have to select the output directory. Once again, you're going to hit the button with the three dots. I always put it in the same folder as the original file. Just hit save. You're going to select your compression level. Nine is the best. It'll make it the smallest. It doesn't affect gameplay at all. Then you're going to hit the compress button. And then you'll see this little dialog box. It'll say how long it is in the compression method and the rate of compression. So here is our new compressed ISO file right here. So CSO looks like it took about 150 megabytes off, which is a significant amount. So the two games we're going to look at today are Final Fantasy IV and Persona 2 Innocent Sin. So let's head over to the NES Classic. I'm going to go over the frame skip and why we downloaded that other core. All right, we're going to take a look at Final Fantasy IV first. I'm going to turn the music up a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about with this frame skip stuff. Okay, so if you are familiar with this game, it is not supposed to sound like this. And that's because we don't have any frame skips set. So what you need to do is hit start and select to go into your RetroArch menu. It's going to put you in your quick menu automatically. You're going to scroll down to the options tab. Go to frame skip. Now a good rule of thumb to go by is once the music sounds clear, you're at a pretty good frame skip option. That is not 100% of the time, but for this game it works. So we're going to set frame skip to 1. We're going to back out and resume the game and see how it sounds. Not great. We can probably do better than that. So we'll go back to options again. Set frame skip to 2. Resume. That's better, but we're still not where we want to be. Let's try frame skip 3. That sounds much better. But now the music is a lot clearer. It sounds there's still some skipping, but you're playing a PSP game on a, you know, on a classic system, it's not going to be 100% perfect. So here's another good example of why you should change the frame skip. We're about to get into a battle. I set the frame skip back to 0. Let's take a look how this battle goes. Fighting some floating eyes. Not, not a very smooth effect there with the red fang. Okay, so now we're back to frame skip three. Let's see how this next fight goes. All right, we're fighting a zoo. Much better. That was a lot more clear. So, 
like I was saying, the other problem and why we have this 2048 core installed, we're going to exit this game. So let's quit Retrowork. So I'm just going to take a couple minutes to talk about Final Fantasy IV. This is all real time. So Final Fantasy IV is about this guy named Cecil or Cecil, however you want to pronounce it. He's a member of a division called the Red Wings. And they just went to some town, some mystic town, and they pillaged it. And they got a crystal because that's what the king wanted. All these guys aren't really happy about that because they thought they were doing good and they don't understand where the good is in taking stuff from people who obviously can't protect themselves from, you know, a force like the Red Wings. And we're back. That took a while. That's one of the main issues with PSP games. It takes a long time for them to go back to the menu. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to reload Final Fantasy 4 real quick, and there is a small workaround that makes it a little more tolerable than that. All right, so now we have Final Fantasy 4 loaded again. We're going to hit Start and Select to go back to our Retro Work menu. Go to Close Content. You'll know you did this correctly if in the bottom corner it says No Core. Then we're going to go to Load Core. Load that 2048 core that we downloaded a little bit ago, and go to Start Core. So this is a 2048 game, it's a puzzle game, I know nothing about it. Anyway, so hit start and select again while you have this core open. Go down to quit retro work. And returns you to the menu much faster. Alright, so the next test, Persona 2 Innocent Sin. Um, this is at frame skip zero. You can see the game looks and runs really well, but that music... little bit of issue with the music so back into the menu options let's set it to one see how that sounds still not there okay so the best option I found for a clear sound for this game is setting the frame skip to three much better but now when you look at the gameplay so this is one of those instances where following the music, it'll get you good music, but the gameplay stutters really bad because you're skipping so many frames. This is not a game, or this is a game where there's a lot of animation and stuff like that, so it's not really sharp when you go to move around. A happy medium I found was setting it to frame skip two. That way you get a little bit of glitchy sound, but you're not losing out on all that animation with the characters running and stuff like that. So two doesn't bother me so much. It's going to depend on game by game which one runs with the best frame skip. A lot of games, um, if they're not very high intensity type of games, will run with a frame skip set to zero and you can play them normally. But with this game, you have to kind of mess around. It depends on if you care more about the music or having clear gameplay. So there you go. With a couple of tweaks, you can get PSP games running really well on your NES or SNES Classic. Make sure you keep coming back. I'm going to have a lot more stuff to show what you can do on your system. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Hey guys, if you want to contact me outside of YouTube, feel free to use any of these social media platforms. Also, while you're here, why don't you check out some of the other videos that I put out, and if you feel like it, subscribe to the channel.